So welcome to Amboseli. Um We're going through some pretty tough times right now and it probably doesn't look quite what you would expect when you think of a drought landscape in Africa but that's where we're at right now so we thought we'd make a short film about what we, what's happening right now, why this is part of the ecosystem dynamics and what it means for the elephants. Unlike other ecosystems in Africa and other pop elephant populations. In drought times, the Amseli elephants very rarely die of thirst. We've got these two big permanent swamps that are in the centre of the park, and they're really where the elephants can always come and drink. There's water there year-round. What fails is primary productivity, new plant growth. And what that means is that the quality and availability of food for the elephants goes down. Now, elephant populations are kind of like all herbivore populations, they do these boom and bust cycles. So in the good times they crank out loads of babies and in the hard times some of those calves aren't going to make it. So the family I'm with now, this is the IAIC family, they've lost two calves so far. And it's kind of fascinating because it shows you how much more expensive it is to have a calf that's suckling versus a calf in gestation. So at the same time as we have these guys promising us rain but not quite here yet. We're losing a series of older calves, uh, those were born last year in 2016, and we're having new babies born as well. So it's a real complex, really dynamic environment and we hope that the rains are going to come soon, but this is really the point that the elephants are starting to suffer. The way that we tell elephants are in bad shape, or good shape, in good body condition, is by looking at their hips, their shoulders and their cheekbones. Those are the really three pointers. So hips disappear when elephants are fat, they basically get this layer of roundness over the top. And when hips first appear, that's a sign that they're starting to not have so much body reserves going on. Then you'll see their shoulders. And then once you start seeing cheekbones appear and then becoming sunken around the face, that's then really starting to move into the lowest scale of body condition. And what you'll see is that some females might look pretty sunken around their face and their calves are quite fat, and that's an indication that they're using their milk top-ups to just help buffer their calves against the costs of the drought. And what we often see is that calves are still born in drought times because females can manage to carry a pregnancy through uh, but the increased costs of having a baby suckling which is much more than actually growing a fetus in in utero that that's the time that the pregnancy or that the reproductive attempt fails is because they can carry the costs of pregnancy but they can't do the the extra milk production that's needed and mothers are doing a pretty good job of buffering older the, the older calves who are still breastfeeding and the younger calves. Who is losing out is the calves who were born in 2016 and that's because their growth rate is just outpacing what they can put in even if their mothers are still producing milk. And the reason that we see a lot of uh, 18 months to 2 year olds dying is that they are the ones who are doing the fastest growth and they can't be buffered. Females can't produce milk of high enough quality to offset that lowered vegetation quality that the calves are experiencing. And that's more true for males and females because they're growing faster. So they're the ones that we lose most often is 18 months to 2 year olds and males more than females and then older calves. So we've lost probably about 15 calves in the last three weeks and that's just who we know about because a lot of the elephants are spending time outside so we'll capture more mortalities when they come back and we see who's missing from the family. So we get two kinds of mortality data. We get the carcasses that we find and that our part conservation partners find but it's really difficult sometimes to identify from a carcass unless it's really, really fresh. Um, and so a lot of the time what we do is we figure out who died during these periods just by figuring out who's not with the family anymore. And sometimes those carcasses will be ones that we just never identified. And sometimes for small calves, the carcasses might never be found, especially if they die when they're in the swamps and then they sink. So this is what a drought does to young elephants. Um, and when we do find carcasses for younger animals, Often they may be dispersed by predators before we even get to them and we may not know unless we see them actually m missing from the family. But even in a condition like this, there's no way that we could identify this carcass. I can't even tell what sex this calf was. Um, there's too much decomposition. I can say that it's not even a year old from the body size 
and also I can still see there's some skin and it's quite furry so I'm pretty sure that this calf was born this year um, so what we'll do is later when we've censused all the families that use this area we'll be able to figure out who we think this is um, there's nobody around at the moment guarding but I know who uses this area most frequently so we'll be able to cross-reference it might take us a couple of months so often what happens is that we don't find out exactly the final death toll until we've seen everyone it might take six eight months to really figure out how many elephants were lost in, in total these are our family books that we carry with us and in it it lists everybody who's in the family and then as we see individuals and, and note they're missing we can note that they're dead so depressingly this year I am writing in dead 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 we lost Amelia we know her 2016 calf died as well um, most of these mortalities for the AA family is the sighting of the mother and the calf is not present so we don't even always have to find a carcass to know that we have a um, mortality in the family especially for young animals this is a census on the 18th of November I found these individuals and I found Anne with a brand new calf but Alfre's calf was dead and Unhurried was there without her male calf from 2016 who's also dead. These are guys that use this area. It may be that this carcass belongs to one of them. Um, we'll have to cross check the dates for when they were last seen and how soon we think they've got lost. Unfortunately there's so many at the moment that I can't remember who lost when. Um, that's kind of getting a bit overwhelming. We've recorded 15 calf deaths in the last two weeks. Um, so this is Aina and you can see she doesn't look too bad at all. Um, and that's because she's not suckling a calf. She doesn't have a calf. So all of the energy she's taking in, she can assign to her own growth and her own maintenance, her own body processes. But uh, the calf who's lying down, her mother, that's Epamia. She's a little bit more skinny and that's because what she's putting in is coming out not only in her, maintaining her own body but also the calf's growth. So this calf was born in March of this year and if the rains come now, it's likely that this one will be fine and will survive. It's quite far between down in the park where we are where there's permanent water and they know that there's clean water to drink and the few places that have experienced a little bit of flush of fresh growth. And it's far for calves to walk and females need to drink pretty much every day if they're going to maintain their milk production. So it's too far to take the calves out, feed there, come back and drink and do that repeatedly. That would be really damaging to their energy budget. So they tend not to do that. It's kind of stick where you are until the rains come and you know where to move to. This green probably has better protein in it than she can find elsewhere. So right now the elephants are really trading off. Do they stay where there's water, where they can drink every day, which is really important for their milk production? Or do they try and travel a bit further and catch where there's maybe been some rain, some clouds, bursts that have given some slightly better green? And this is where we see these different ecological strategies that the families follow start to play out. The elephants are really slow at this time of year. You'll see that they do a lot of resting. They're really conserving their energy, even when they're doing okay. We miss the sparkle and the sense of curiosity that you usually see when they're, we're around them. So you can see that uh, this is three holes, the matriarch. You can see how the family is really, really spread out in this area. Um, and a lot of families are breaking down into really small units right now. So to combat this low availability of food, one of the things that females do is that they split into small groups and that way they can minimize their competition. That's one of the powerful things about elephants' fission fusion systems is that they can help to buffer the effects of tough conditions like this. When it rains, we'll see grass coming up on these plains and we hope to see big groups of elephants. But for now, we just have to imagine what that's going to look like and trust it's going to happen again. These guys haven't done terribly badly yet, but it's really at the stage where if the rains don't come, we will see more and more animals dying. Uh, we're already seeing a lot of zebra, wildebeest dying, a lot of livestock have already died, and the ones that are around are still in really poor condition, so everybody needs the rain now. The elephants have done much better than many other species.
So that was one of our big guys. Um, and I can smell him now, he's in full mast. Um, and this is one of the fascinating things about elephants is that although we've been in drought conditions for a couple of months now, we've still got males coming into this active reproductive condition where they're expending a lot of calories and they need to be in great shape to do mast. And the reason that they can do this still is because males and females are following totally different strategies. So unlike females who are constrained to drinking every day, males can stay out in the drier areas where there's better nutrition, higher protein, and pack on those calories so they can still come into their sexually active periods and come and cruise for females, which is what this guy is doing. None of our elephants are starving to death. You'll see photos of starving elephants and they're just skin and bones and you can see all of their ribs. But elephants are like people, they need a balanced diet and when that balance goes off we think one of two things happens for the Amboseli elephants. Sometimes they colic uh, in the same way as a horse, they rely on putting lots of vegetation in and taking very relatively little out of their diet. So if that gets ba uh, unbalanced then they can colic just like horses do. And we, the second thing is a little bit more complicated. We think it's more about parasite loads or maybe disease basically just overwhelms them and they just kind of lie down and stop breathing. And that's what we're seeing happening right now. Amboseli experiences extreme droughts about once every 10 years. And so while it's not fun to be here at this time, it is really part of how these ecosystems work. They are semi-arid, they get low and very variable rainfall and that's what the plants have evolved to cope with. While it isn't fun to document these kind of times, it is how these animal populations and how these ecosystems have evolved. So you get these cycles of almost boom and bust on the very long term. So in good years, lots of animals have lots of surviving offspring and numbers increase. And then in tough years, you'll see a lot of animals perish and then populations fall back down again. And that's always been part of these ecosystems and the elephants are the same. We've had huge recruitment in the nine years since the last drought and it's just not possible that the population can keep increasing and there's just not the space, there's not the food for them. So it's awful to lose calves and it's really awful to lose older animals that we know really well and have followed for a long time but it is part of these natural ecosystems and it's part of what happens here. Of course, one of the big questions is what climate change is going to do. Is that going to make droughts more frequent in this part of the country? And what does that mean for the animal populations in this part of the world and the land use that goes on in this part of the world? I don't think we really know enough yet. We, we know enough to be worried, but not enough to know how worried we should be. And that's one of the reasons that we're fighting so hard to promote coexistence and promote sustainable land use and work with all our partners so that we have a functioning ecosystem that can cope with whatever climate change might throw at it. People might say, why don't you give the elephants more food? Why don't you give them more water so that you don't lose any during these tough times? One of the reasons is that we don't need to. There's water around and they know where it is, but also this is a natural population. We're not controlling this at all. We're here to study this and we want to understand about what the elephants need in order to thrive and what they're going to need in the next 20, 40, 60, 100 years in order to make it. But you can't understand that if you change it, firstly. And, and secondly, there's no reason to provision these animals. This is part of a natural, healthy ecosystem. And we can't get involved, we can't change what's happening here. We may not like it, it may be hard to lose animals that we're personally very attached to, but our job here is to document what's happening and understand what is happening, and we can't do that if we're changing it. There's also a huge risk of unintended consequences to any intervention. So in areas where you've provisioned water a lot, then you get massive ecosystem effects because it releases elephants from an ecological constraint and they suddenly start having lots of babies, all of which survive, and then you have a huge population increase that your landscape can't cope with. And that was what the 
management strategies in southern Africa used as a, as a regime for culling, for actually shooting elephants, for shooting entire families, because they felt that the landscape was becoming so degraded that it couldn't support the number of elephants anymore. Actually, what they realised is that instead of these cycles of culling that they were engaged in, if they just closed off those artificial water points, and there were hundreds of them, then the elephant numbers stabilised. And that's because elephant population dynamics are evolved to cope with these systems.